So from this point on in the tutorial I assume that you're familiar with inverse and forward kinematics and that you have some basic rigging knowledge. So IKs don't export. What do you do if you gotta have IK on a skeleton? You can do one of two things. You can set it up with a double skeleton, basically a controller skeleton that drives an FK export skeleton that has the geo bound to it and this will work. Or if you have advanced programming skills you can do dynamic IK in code but I'm not gonna cover that topic. So the double skeleton technique is generally the way that developers rig complex characters and animations for exports so I'm going to briefly go over one way to set this up. However if you can avoid doing this you definitely should. I recommend to animate FK if possible because the setup I'm about to show could be error prone if you don't know what you're doing with rigging. So here I have a rig of a bee's hind leg that I made. You can see that there's a couple things going on in this rig. This leg is driven by two joint chains, a forward joint chain, a partial reverse chain, has multiple IKs driving it, a pole vector, point constraints, and set driven keys. It has unique control points, a bunch of crap. So how do I get the animation on this skeleton into Ogre if I actually need to keep this rig for control? The method I'm going to show you will negate all complexity of the source skeleton. So let's begin. Now this is going to be a complex rig so we can't let happen to us what I showed you earlier before with the rock guy's broken root transforms. In my opinion, you should usually avoid animating the root joint of a skeleton, but in this case I recommend it even more. That's because in a few steps our export skeleton's root is going to be locked to a joint on this skeleton. So we need to make sure that that joint on the controller is at the origin at 0, 0, 0. So therefore this joint needs to be locked here. Now let's make an independent and continuous FK bone chain over the existing skeleton. This is going to be our export skeleton. So let's hide everything but joints. And I'll make a temporary root so that it won't try to extend the existing bone chain when I click on it. What I really want to do is make a new chain. I'm using V to snap. Done. Let's delete the temporary root that I made. Let's name the export joint. We'll call it BLEG. Now I need to parent constraint each of the new joints under its respective joint on the controller rig. I do that by selecting the joint on the controller rig first and the one on the controlled rig on the export rig second. Well, let's get started parent done so I took the geometry out of the old bone chain it can't be in the old chain hierarchy obviously it has to be smooth bound to the export skeleton so let's do that now done now we need to weight the verts just like we did to the rock guy with a component editor. Done. Now let's make a simple animation. Alright, so I made this weird kind of jumping thing with the B leg. <laughs> Let's see how it exports. First thing we gotta do is tag the root of the export skeleton. So let's get this, the LFA scene manager. Let's tag it. And we gotta give it animation. Let's define the animation. Let's call it jumpy and export. So here's Ogre Meshi. Here's our B leg. Let's check our super uber complex animation. There's our jumpy animation. So there you go, that crazy controller is now driving our FK Ogre animation. So what if you have to have complex deformers? For example, you might see the animation I did of this heart 
for the mitre clip project and this is running in Ogre. If you look at it you can see there are all sorts of deformations happening in there and I did use a bunch of non-exportable deformers in addition to skeletal animation to animate this so how did I get it running real time in Ogre? Well in this case I worked around the exporter limitations by baking all the deformations down into a blend shape for each frame and then I exported that normally with the LFA tools. I'm not going to go over how to do that in detail, but I did it by customizing the pipeline ahead of the LFA tools. Now my point in mentioning this is to prove that really any type of deformation and animation is possible in Ogre. The key is only to not bite off more than you can chew. There's usually multiple ways to tackle a problem, but if you keep things simple, you'll go far. Now in my next tutorial, I'll teach you how you can customize the LFA tools to suit your pipeline and preferences.